In 1863, uh, really after the Battle of Gettysburg, after the Emancipation Proclamation gets passed, remember that freed the slaves in the rebellious states, Lincoln begins putting his plan together uh, for Reconstruction, putting the country back together. Remember, Lincoln's plan was a plan of leniency. He wanted to make it easy for the country to come back together. He didn't want people in the North to be sick of the war uh, and want it ended. So uh, it was a 10% plan. 10% of voters that voted in the 1860 election would have to swear uh, an oath of allegiance to the country. And, of course, the southern states uh, were going to have to agree to abolish slavery, uh, thus agree to the 13th Amendment. Because of the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Johnson, his vice president, also has his plan for reconstruction. Uh, he believes that the southern states should decide their course and how they're going to come back. Uh, he didn't think that African Americans deserved the right to vote. Uh, he was against the plantation owners. He was more in support, support excuse me, of the smaller farmers. Um, his plan is very much like Lincoln's offering amnesty and, and pardons. Um, he was going to protect the property of the southern states, uh, and like Lincoln, he also uh, supported the 13th Amendment. Now, the radical Republicans, um, th these guys, it was a, a, actually a minority of uh, Republicans. They believe blacks were entitled to the same political rights as that of whites. And that's what's one of the things that made them radical. They wanted to punish Confederate leaders. Uh, they wanted to create this Freedmen's Bureau, create hospitals and teaching centers and things like that. Um, they, they wanted to pass the Civil Rights Act. In fact, they did, but it was vetoed by Andrew Johnson, and then they overturned it, which was one of the first times in history that occurred. Uh, they created the 14th Amendment, uh, defining African Americans as citizens, and they divided the South into military districts. Hey guys, so uh, let's start reviewing for Reconstruction. Remember, Reconstruction means um, we're trying to put together the country after uh, the Civil War. So we need to talk first about the compromise of really 1877, even though um, I need to talk first about the election of 1876. Um, remember, what's going on in the country at this time is that the Union forces have won the Civil War. There are Union troops that are uh, still controlling military districts in those southern states. Uh, African Americans are, are trying to use their newfound freedom using the 14th Amendment, which defined them as citizens, and the 15th Amendment, which allowed African American males, anyways, to vote. We have these two characters running for president of the United States of America. Uh, one is Sam Tilden. He's a Democrat from New York. Now, what you need to know about Mr. Tilden um, is he believes the government should actually have a limited role. So he's more of a guy who believes in state rights, um, even though he supported the Union troops uh, in the war. And he's going to be the guy who wins the popular vote. The next man running for president of the United States is Rutherford B. Hayes. He's a Republican from Ohio, and he's more about protecting the industrialists, growing the economy, uh, talks about protective tariffs. I guess the important thing about this election is that uh, after it's held, Tilden wins the popular vote, but neither one of these gentlemen win the Electoral College. Uh, remember, that's how we choose president of the United States here in this country. There's three states that are in question, Florida, Louisiana, and South Carolina. And they're in question because, well, African Americans are trying to vote. We got the KKK involved. It's just a mess in those three states. Uh, so, it goes to this uh, electoral college board, and uh, really, that's where this this deal this deal takes place. Uh, some people call it the great betrayal. What happens is uh, Tilden actually has twenty more electoral votes than what Hayes had, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, a couple of days actually before a president needs to be inaugurated, this deal that's made and actually puts. Uh, Hayes is the next president of the United States because Hayes agrees to remove the Union troops, remove them now, not later, but it was going to be now. And, of course, th that's going to push civil rights back easily 60 years. We're going to talk about the 1960s. So remember the three amendments, the Reconstruction Amendments.
we need you to refer to those as the reconstruction amendments if you have to write about them. But the three amendments that get passed during this time period are the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. The 13th abolished slavery. The 14th defined what a citizen was. And the 15th gave uh, African American males the right to vote. And uh, remember the last two are, are really pushed through by the uh, radical Republicans because remember uh, the radical Republicans uh, really want to punish the South uh, and they want to ensure that African Americans get uh, equal rights. I do order and declare that all persons held as slaves within said designated states and parts of states are and henceforward shall be free. <laughs> And that the executive government of the United States, including the military and naval authorities thereof, will recognize and maintain the freedom of said persons. Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation promises freedom for the slaves. But this is 1866, one full year after the official end of America's bloodiest war. This scene is not a pre-Civil War atrocity. It is a post-Civil War nightmare. So how was the South a uh, pre-Civil War nightmare, uh, like that video clip suggested? Well, you guys got to experience part of it. We uh, let you try and take that literacy test. And remember how you guys said it made you feel you were frustrated, you were mad. It said that it made you feel stupid. Uh, but this was a way that the southern states said that they were uh, you know, allowing African Americans to vote. They simply had to pass that test. Uh, remember, another way that they kept African Americans from voting were poll taxes. Uh, you had to pay a, a tax in order to vote. And many of the African Americans were in absolute uh, poverty, destitute poverty. Um, so they had no chance of paying that poll tax. And uh, that's something that's going to continue all the way into the 1960s. Uh, also, the KKK emerges, the Ku Klux Klan, uh, a terrorist organization that uh, frightened African Americans into not voting. So by ending Reconstruction, by pulling those northern troops out, uh, the southern states are kind of like loose constructionists, dare I say, some analytical information for you guys. Because they were following the rules. I can't get both my hands in there. Following the rules, uh, but they were making up their own. Now what these were called, you guys, uh, are what they're referred to as black codes or Jim Crow laws. After Reconstruction, we also need to include another Supreme Court case. But first, my Supreme Court dance. I love you, buddy. The court case, uh, Plessy v. Ferguson, actually starts in probably 1892, but the Supreme Court will uh, rule on it in 1896. What happened was, is Homer Plessy, who is uh, seven-eighths Caucasian, who, how they did the math or how they divided him up, I have no idea, uh, but he's seven-eighths ca Caucasian. He is forced in the state of Louisiana to ride in a railway car that is reserved for African Americans. So blacks need to ride in a railroad car separated from whites. So he sues the state. This goes all the way to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court rules that separate is equal. They agree that it does not violate the 14th Amendment. They're still citizens. They can still ride the railroad car, but it's okay if they separate it. Of course, this began segregation, uh, the separating of races. So we're going to start to see after this point uh, restaurants that African Americans aren't allowed to sit in the front or... Uh, Let's see, on buses, uh, when we invent them, because it's still 1896, uh, but buses, maybe they're going to have to sit in the back. Uh, there's going to be water fountains reserved for whites and blacks, bathrooms reserved for whites and blacks. So, yeah, even though the Civil War has ended and we've reconstructed the country 
and the Southerners are allowed full participation back into uh, Congress. Uh, as a country, we still have a long way to go uh, to heal the wrongs of segregation and slavery.